The Arduino hardware is under fire, and this is a bad deal for open source and hardware, as recent updates to Arduino's terms of service and privacy policy have caused community concern over new clauses on user content, data, and restrictions on reverse engineering. We're going to discuss what was updated in the privacy policy, how a company like Adafruit Industries came out and is calling this a bad deal for makers, and why this truly affects open source and open hardware. Also, there has been a response by Qualcomm, the owner of Arduino now. For those of you unaware, an Arduino is a small open source electronics board used to build whatever projects you want. It's very popular because it's easy to learn, it's beginner friendly, and has a huge community because it is open source. On the screen are just some flavors with the latest and greatest being the revision three of the Arduino. But this recent announcement and change of policy has makers really confused and has caused community backlash as there has been a lot of concerns from users that Arduino is going to shift away from its open source ethos. So how did this all start out? Well, it seems like this has all transpired after a recent partnership with Qualcomm. In 2024, Arduino announced collaboration with Qualcomm and, and some use cases of Qualcomm's AI compatible chips. And after that partnership that started in 2024, Qualcomm actually recently acquired Arduino in full. On October 7th, 2025, there's an announcement that Arduino was being acquired by Qualcomm. In the announcement, the claim was that Arduino will, would remain an independent brand under Qualcomm and the tools, mission, and support would continue as it used to under the Arduino brand. And here was the official announcement Qualcomm to acquire Arduino accelerating developers access to its leading edge computing and AI and the highlights written out by Qualcomm as this is from their news feed acquisition to combine Qualcomm's leading edge products and technologies with Arduino's vast ecosystem and community to empower business students entrepreneurs tech professionals educators and enthusiasts to quickly and easily bring ideas to life. We'll see just in a little bit whether or not you agree with this sentiment after making changes to the terms of service, including the privacy policy. Anyways, the new Arduino Uno Q, Arduino's first dual brain board powered by Qualcomm's Dragon Wing platform bridges high performance computing with real-time control to enable AI in a blink. AI, AI, AI. That's all they're shooting for here. And then finally, Arduino App Lab is a new integrated development environment that unifies Arduino journey across real-time operating systems, Linux, Python, and AI flows, simplifying build, test, and deployment. And based on this announcement, it doesn't seem like there was any plan to keep Arduino as is. They wanted to pull the Arduino ecosystem into a much larger Qualcomm Edge AI ecosystem. As a lot of this talks about AI, Arduino has over 33 million users. And again, like they said here, that's all sorts of people, including businesses, students, entrepreneurs, tech professionals, educators, enthusiasts. And this makes it a default path for Qualcomm to be able to put their own chip and funnel it into this new group of people, really to make the Arduino what I would guess some kind of edge AI IoT. IoT prototyping board. Anyways, it felt like a move that would take Arduino away from microcontrollers towards higher end performance, maybe even Linux and AI devices. Anyways, this isn't the problem. The problem was the major worries that people had and still have and now have become more apparent as the community across forums, social media, and open source circle were worried about the loss of Arduino's open source ethos. Arduino has always been open hardware, open software, transparent and community driven. Qualcomm has an aggressive patent culture. It is known for extensively patenting its licensing, having royalty and enforcement. So one would be right to question the fact of will Qualcomm actually keep Arduino open, simple, and community driven? Well, it feels like we got to see past the veil in a recent announcement as Qualcomm updated Arduino's terms of service and privacy policy, which some of the new terms grant Arduino an irrevocable perpetual license to use content uploaded to its platform. Other things that seemed fishy were some reverse engineering, restrictions, some data and AI updates, and other legal compliance that was all added into the Arduino's terms of conditions and privacy policy. So of course, that brought up major concerns to users, especially when it comes to broad licensing for user content and new patent restrictions. Now, one of the big do-it-yourself electronics companies that makes much of this hardware for Arduinos is Adafruit. Adafruit Industries is a huge community-focused company that helps people build these electronics projects easily, and it's known for its high-quality boards, tons of sensors, great guides, and major devotion to open source. Now, the very interesting part is on a LinkedIn post, 
Adafruit Industries did talk about the terms of service and privacy policy shift from Qualcomm as it was called a shift from open to controlled, at least how this was summarized by AI. Yay, just another place for AI to summarize our posts for us. That's gonna be a different video, I won't focus on that. And it's a big deal that Adafruit seems to be criticizing Qualcomm Arduinos because Adafruit is one of the most respected and trusted voices in the maker market. So I would say this has a bit of weight to it. So let's actually read through what Adafruit industry's concerns are. So the post here, Qualcomm owned Arduino quietly pushed a sweeping rewrite of its terms of service and privacy policy. And the changes mark a clear break from the open hardware ethos that built the platform. The new document introduces an irrevocable perpetual license over anything users upload, broad surveillance style monitoring of AI features, a clause preventing users from identifying potential patent infringement, years long retention of usernames even after account deletion, and the integration of all user data, including miners into Qualcomm's global data ecosystem, military weird things, and more. Several sections effectively reshape Arduino from an open community platform into a tightly controlled corporate service with deep data extraction built in. The most striking addition. Users are now explicitly forbidden from reverse engineering or even attempting to understand how the platform works unless Arduino gives permission. That's a profound shift from a brand long embraced by educators, makers, researchers, and open source advocates. With the cloud having a rough day and many systems offline yesterday, anyone invested in transparency, community governance, or data rights should read these documents closely. And they link both the privacy policy and the terms of use. Somewhere an old Uno is whispering, this is not my beautiful life. Forbes did a couple press release style features with incorrect information that Qualcomm or Arduino supplied. Obviously, Qualcomm has severe issues with fraud, acquisitions, etc. This was three days ago, former Qualcomm executive sentenced to prison for $180 million fraud scheme, and Bill Curtis and Steve McDonald, please consider a revisit. Nakul Dougal seems to be the one that will end up taking the fall for this. The CEO of Qualcomm is not in the press release for the sale, and the press release seems like it was made by ChatGPT when you put it through those AI detectors. Anyway, Nakul and the Arduino better get a ride in over 10 Gulf streams, which are a puzzle to investors. Why so many and why get a G800 now that's over 75 mil? That's how much Arduino has in funding. US's Qualcomm adds G800 to a corporate jet fleet. And this post is ended with a dystopian magazine cover, The Death of the Arduino. And this has really seen quite a bit of engagement, at least on LinkedIn, over 2,100 likes and over 260 comments already. And the tone of the comments below are that people are concerned, disappointed, and that there's a wide shared belief that the acquisition and new terms of service betray Arduino's open source roots, with sentiments like this will hurt education and research, rest in peace the Arduino, and much, much more. This is all about a week ago, although it hasn't seemed like many are talking about this outside of this LinkedIn post. And it is quite wild that Adafruit stepped up and said this. And I believe this actually forced Qualcomm to respond because they updated the frequently asked questions on Arduino. Specifically, the section that is the most interesting, at least to me, is the terms of service and privacy policy update. Can you elaborate on the latest updates to the terms of service and privacy policy of Arduino? They just recently added this in. After backlash, not only from Adafruit, but from the open source community, this is their explanation on their latest updates. Arduino was built by and continues to thrive because of a global ecosystem of educators, makers, students, researchers, and developers who care deeply about openness, transparency, and user empowerment. Your feedback matters to us and we take it seriously. First and foremost, the future of open source licenses that govern our hardware or software projects remain openly available and community driven. Any hardware, software, or services, e.g. the Arduino IDE, hardware schematics, tooling, and libraries released with open source licenses remain available as before. There's no need to use reverse engineering on those artifacts since they are fully open. Restrictions on reverse engineering continue to apply to software as a service, cloud applications, anything that was open stays open. As before, the Arduino does not claim any ownership on user generated content, but clarifies that the content you choose to publish on the Arduino platforms can be used by the community and to enable user requested features, collaboration tools, and operation of cloud services. The new AI policy 
terms aim to encourage the safe use of AI in connection with Arduino products. We understand that using AI presents new and exciting avenues for development. Our updated terms of service intend to encourage responsible and safe use of AI enabled products and to discourage misuse, including prohibiting the use of our artificial intelligence enabled products for military, dangerous, illegal, deceptive, and exploitative purposes. The updated privacy policy clarifies data retention information for different data processing scenarios and other standards like age limitations to provide age-appropriate services and content. As disclosed in the privacy policy, we limit data retention for inactive users by automatically deactivating their accounts after 24 months of inactivity, in which case usernames will still be preserved in the Arduino forum to address an explicit request from the forum community to maintain attribution for user-generated content where user requests account deletion, the username would be promptly removed and related posts would become anonymous. Our updated patent terms aim to prevent any third party to use the platform to bring patent litigation claims against Arduino and its community. This lets us release new products and services faster while creating a safe space for community, our customers and our partners to share their newest and best products and projects. In summary, the updated terms of service and privacy policy are intended to bolster the open ethos that defines Arduino. The updates aim to provide clarity on the rights that you have over your creations and protections you receive when using Arduino services. The latest changes reflect enhanced data practice transparency with clearer and more granular privacy disclosures, as well as strengthened clarity and protection on miners' data processing, new product capabilities, updates to provision concerning our compliance with export controls and U.S.-specific privacy laws, data handling, and other legal regimens and standards, and the need to provide clear language to make how you purchase and return things from us clearer and easier for a broader, more diverse set of services, including expanded commercial terms concerning premium services. With that in mind, our commitment remains the same to support an open, collaborative, and innovative environment where makers and developers can create freely and confidently. If you have any extra questions, concerns, suggestions, it says they're they're welcome to an open dialogue at privacy at arduino.cc. So this seems to be the response from Qualcomm on Arduino's site, but it doesn't necessarily feel like they've covered some of the main community concerns in this, as what happens with patent exposure and the integration of user data into the Qualcomm ecosystem. Statements like openness remains the same and that they have clarity and transparency, well, it's never directly expressed how these are going to remain the same and what the actual mission behind all of this is, or at least I'm not picking up on it. They're repeatedly using reassuring language instead of addressing specific risks head on. And it's almost like they're using corporate talk in a polished PR setting, although they are welcoming people to contact them. So we'll see what comes of this in the weeks as people are still concerned about the trust model of Arduino. Built over 20 years, the openness, transparency, and user freedom is what built Arduino. Now it's being reshaped under Qualcomm. They're already known for their closed systems, patents, and lock-in. And to many, the terms of service and privacy policy changes, including the acquisition, all signal a shift away from an open source maker culture, which is what drove Arduino for such a long time now. We'll see how this all plays out. And this is just the first signal seemingly as a shift away from an open community-driven hardware platform. What do you think about all this? Do you have any concerns of the openness of Arduino now? Let's talk about it in the comment section below. I just wanted to cover this one as I've used Arduino many times in the past, and now I'll be second guessing it. As even back in college, it was one of the first places I learned about microcontrollers and even used it as a control system for one of my projects, which was a regenerative braking system that I was building with a team. Anyways, it was really fun to use. I learned a lot back then, and I hope that remains true for people in the future. Anyways, thanks for watching to the end of the video. You're a true fan. Share this with someone else. Hype it up so it gets out to more people. I guess YouTube wants us to do that now. Don't forget to subscribe below and smash that like button on the way back up. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.